Andy, first of all, welcome to Oshkosh 2013. It's been a great week so far, but I'd like to hear, first of all, what your impressions are about being a vendor at Oshkosh. Um, it is one of our favorite shows of the year. It's where you get a real good quality of uh, people coming on the booth, quality of questions, and that gives us great feedback into what people are expecting. We've actually had a different flavor to some of the questions this year. Last year we were uh, talking about our ADSP solutions and people saying, well, will it catch on, you know, do, do I really need this? That's changed completely this year. This year people are coming up and you can tell by the questions that they've read all the background material, they've understood what they need to do, and now they're asking detailed questions about how does this really work, how do I really hook this stuff together. What's the trig solution right now for ADSB equivalency in the air? Well, the thing that we have been focused on is the one part of ADSB that has to be certified, and that's the ADSB out. The primary thing that the FAA want out of ADSB is as part of their next gen solution, they want to be able to have better separation services, better understanding of the airplanes in the sky. And for that, they need everyone to equip with ADSB out. That's a device that's going to send the aircraft's position, velocity, and some of the integrity data as to how that was calculated to the air traffic guys. And that's the out portion of ADSB. There's actually only two ways of doing that. In most of the world, you do that with what's called 1090 megahertz extended squitter. It's a derivative of a MODES transponder. Here in the United States, um, there is also a second choice, which is a technology that came out of the capstone program in Alaska. It's restricted. You can only use it if you're a light aircraft flying below 18,000 feet, but you can use a thing called UAT, which is on a, a different channel, 978 megahertz. The two things that they send are identical. They behave exactly the same from an ATC point of view. They send exactly the same data downlink. The difference between the two technologies is in the Technology that you can then pick up by broadcast. ADSB, the B in ADSB stands for broadcast. And that's because the technology in the aircraft in the system is broadcast, not just sent to the ATC guys on the ground, but it can be picked up by other aircraft in the system. And this gives you traffic situational awareness for all of the nearby traffic. It's poor man's TCAS, if you like. The complication here in the United States, not available anywhere else in the world, is this 978 megahertz UAT service. Because in addition to being used for that air-to-air -air and traffic awareness, it also has some spare bandwidth which allows the towers that ATC have deployed across all of the country to be used to uplink some other products. They also transmit some weather information, NOTAM information, flight information services using that back channel. But a risk of being contentious, that isn't actually ADSB at all. That's using the spare bandwidth, that's a bit, a bit like uh, the data services that are interlaced in TV signals or the, uh, the downlink of weather on Sirius satellite radio. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Let's talk briefly, if we can, and just kind of summarize, go point by point through the product line, because yep. I met you guys a couple of years ago, and you had a couple of neat things. And every time I see you, you got a couple more neat things. And yep. now it's really getting hard to keep up with you guys. Well, yes, we have had some, some new developments. Some of the new work that we've done, though, has been at the detail level of the certifications and the technologies that we support. Our transponder line in particular, we have the conventional mark width transponder that slides into a KT-76A style tray. We also have the super compact TT-22 transponder, which is much more aimed at the light sport guys, or actually conventional airplanes that are just short of panel space. We've been working quite hard over the last year on completing some work with the FAA to get those up to the latest ADSB specs and to get some STCs in place to actually prove the interconnection between those transponders and some of the mainstream GPSs that are out there. Um, that's what we've been talking about to a number of customers here at the show because we have in our hand now STCs for a, a growing AML list, a approved model list of not only airplanes but also different combinations of transponder and GPS interfaces. Sounds like a lot of work. 
Yeah, it is. We've actually been helped with some of this work by a company in uh, in, in Denver called Peregrine. Uh, they've uh, they've been acting with us on this STC program, and they're great guys. And so that's uh, that's actually been a lot of fun. One of the things that we did in our STC program, the FAA asked us to demonstrate some of our technology in a non-metal airplane, just to check that everything was still going to work okay. The airframe of choice was actually a pit special. It's not a metal airframe, so we went with that. We equipped it with a fully compliant ADS-B out solution using a trig transponder and a GPS, and then flew it for the standard FAA flight test profile that you're required to do as part of an ADS-B STC. When the FAA knew that we actually had a pit special, fully equipped for this, we then actually agreed a supplemental testing program, which was actually for their benefit, not ours, because they were very interested to know what the ground network was going to make of some of the other things that you might choose to do in a pits. So we put together a, an aerobatic sequence, not chosen for its uh, visual appeal, but for different kinds of maneuvers, vertical maneuvers, um, uh, reversals, various things that you can put in there. And we flew this profile against a, a, a stopwatch so that the FAA, who were collecting all of the data in their ground network, could do the correspondence between where they expected the airframe to be and where the ADS-B network put it. They were genuinely interested because there are filters to filter out bogus responses and things like that and they wondered if when the ground network saw what was going on in the sky it would just blank out a lot of the data. The good news is it works and it works inverted, looping, rolling, all of these maneuvers you can actually see them because we have a downloaded trace of the airplane doing all of these things on ADS-B. Cub Crafters is unique in that we can design, prototype and certify and put into production an aircraft. There aren't very many companies in the world that can make that claim. Andy, where does Trig go from here? You guys have made amazing inroads to the industry. Uh, this tends to be a little bit of a parochial industry, so when a new player shows on the scenes, there is a little bit of standoffishness. You guys have done well. You partnered up with some very good companies, and that is all working very nicely, but you got to be plotting a real interesting future. Yes, we are. I mean, this is now our, our ninth year in business, so we've been plugging away at this for a while, and you're right, it takes a while to get established and a, a while to get that awareness. It also takes quite a long time to start to grow the product portfolio. During the next year, you're going to start to see some new and interesting products from Trig. We're looking at the center stack and looking at some of the mandate changes around the world that are going to cause people to, to change the way some things are being done. So some basic technologies there that we'll be rolling out over the next year. By, by this time next year, you might expect to see a good proportion of a, of a conventional stack for a, for a light airplane from Trig, as well as some of the other products that we've already previewed in some audiences, traffic receivers, things like that. Andy, thanks so much for your time. We wish you all the best. We look forward to seeing what's next. But just tell us first, will you? <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you.